Hi everybody, it's Tracy here from Art Fibre Stitch. Today I'm just wanting to get this video up because I have a new product and uh, on my Etsy shop and it's this lovely little crowned crane who has this fantastic crest. So this is an accompanying video that will go with the kit but you will also gain plenty from watching it and trying this kind of thing on your own. You may want to do some other subject but it's all about how you can break it down into shapes and then figure out the layering. You know, what goes down first, like that neck piece is going over top of the body piece and then the head, the beak goes on top, you know, so it's working out which bit goes on top of which. Now, I already have a pattern for this one, so... Um, I know what I uh, wanted to do and that's what I'm doing. I've cut out the pieces, you can see them to the left. And then I have a template there where I, every time I cut out a piece, I pop it on there. And then what I can do is just put my, get my fabric ready. Um, and then slide the whole thing off. And then I'm ready. I can see, I can see it in all of its layers there on the left. So now I'm going to use that same pattern sheet, the template, and I'm going to put it underneath my fabric. This is a great hint when you have to do an applique of some description, that you put it underneath. I'm using a couple of pins to hold it steady, and I'm just using my disappearing marker to mark in basically, I'm not really going to town, but basically where those shapes go. And Doing, also doing that sort of sort of shows me um, you know a little bit about which ones will go underneath others so there that's all done already and I have my pieces here and then I have my my drawing so I'm going to use my handy glue stick and I'm just going to quickly add a little bit of glue just a touch just to get those pieces down. Can you see how that piece there would go down first on the headdress? And then the smaller piece of the headdress goes on top. And I'm going to leave the face there until after I have that neck in. So it all layers up. It all makes sense once you start thinking about how these things have to go. There we go. And the last bit, eyeball. There we are. Now, one thing I always love to include in these slow stitch kits is a bit of this gauze, because I just love that it adds that lovely bit of texture to a design. And uh, so I'll use it and I'll place bits of it, you know, once I've, I've manipulated it and put some holes and some frayed bits in, and it will be underneath the crest and flowing out. And because this, this little dude has fabulous hair. You know, it's like, a, this is a continuation of the fabulous hair. And can you see, it's like a, like a crazy hair day. Anyway, but what you would have to think about is how large is the surround and uh, which bits you're actually going to see. The surround is in the kit. Um, right, so I choose some threads to get me going. And I basically choose the colors that are already there. And then I wait for later to see what I need. And I'm going to just start there with uh, doing that body shape. And it's about simplifying a, a, um, a design. See how we've got the basic shapes to show us what we wanted. So I'm going to stitch this little shoulder here. Sometimes I go on uh, the line. Sometimes I go inside the line and also outside the line to create a little shadow effect. I like it like that. I'm quite happy to do that. See, it's sort of, um, maybe it suggests a bit of movement or something. And then across underneath, I'll go underneath that uh, neck piece. I'm going to use that same dark grey and I'm just going to go around that head shape. And it's just tacking things down, but with a decorative, um, a decorative uh, stranded cotton. So I'm using two strands at the moment because, um, you know, I wanted a stronger line. 
So I'll continue on doing that kind of thing. When I finish with one, I'll come through to the back and then I'll just do a couple of stitches and um, end off. I've just grabbed a light gold now, just a single strand, just to hold that down, just on the edge. I'm not going to go inside the edge and outside the edge and make anything pretty. It's really just to hold that down because we'll be That'll be our focus point and we'll really be working on that headdress later. So at the moment we just want to hold it down. And then again we'll tack the smaller piece down. And then virtually everything has been started. And when you've got some leftovers like I did here with the pale grey, I just went up into the headdress and popped some in there. All right, let's have a look. I've done a little bit whilst I was waiting for my battery to recharge. So you can see I've done, you know, sometimes I use one colour, sometimes I use two different colours. I usually go around things a few times, you know, sometimes on the line, sometimes off the line. Um, and here, this beak, I've done some done some in light grey, and then I've used a dark grey to go around it, and and did that central line a bit, you know, in between the top and the bottom of part of the beak. And it doesn't matter if it gets a bit fuzzy; it will, but you know, you can trim it later if you wish. And here we've got red around that eye. You know just so that you see the eye really against the black but it's that's natural anyway um and now i really think i'm not going to worry too much about the rest of it because it's all about the hair it's all about the wild afro he has happening and i'm going to well i've started here you can see i've just used some of my dark gray light gray and red just a single strand there and see how they always go out 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 at an angle um radiating out so um i've just used those darker and stranger colors right there in on that area and i could take it up a bit but what i'm planning is that as he goes you know we'll go we've got three different golds here We've got a, like a beige and a light gold and a darker gold and it'll be getting lighter towards the tips you know and then out into this out into this that we've put on so we're still working on that i'm going to just mostly do the headdress now i think because of that and the other is just you know it's just to hold up the hair the hair is going to be i hope the amazing thing so here are my bits and pieces that are left. Uh, I wouldn't put too much of the red in. Maybe I could put another single strand. And then we'll get started on those other colours. So sometimes I'm doing a long stitch, sometimes doing a few shorter stitches, but it's always staggered. You know, it never ends in a perfect line. And that's what makes this work. So I'm just going to go here. I'll show you what I mean. So there's a long stitch. Now I'm going to go further out this time from his head and I'm going to do two smaller stitches to go back in. And I'm just using I'm just using that single strand and there's a hair there. And I'm just trying to say that it's all radiating out from there. Sometimes I'll go further. But by the time we get the others on it, you're not going to really see that much of it. At least I'm hoping that this is how it's going to work out. This is how I visualize it, but this is how uh, this is how we go. We work it out. I have an idea, and I have a go to see if it works. And this one will be a, a really nice kit, I think. Something different. Something different to put out there to give people a go at making some nice textile art. Something a little bit unusual. So... All I'm doing is that. Of 
He's quite flamboyant, this crane. Seems like he's so proud of the hair. <laughs> the crest. I should call it what it is. But to me, it just looks like a fabulous hairdo. Who wouldn't show it off? Now, do you see what I mean? We've got a few different colours there yet we can still do. I'm just, just to see what it looks like. I'm going to start with my darkest of the golds. And I've got this, this one here. Always keep in mind that if you start something on one side and you want to balance it up with the other side, that you make sure you keep enough thread back for that. I quite often use, you know, like at the moment I've got like a single strand of this grey that I've kept just in case and things like that. I'm just going to do the same as I did, I think. I don't want to have two longer stitches. I could do some longer. But I'm just going to take it from, from close in. Not as close as the head. I'm trying to go out from there. At least for this first pass. Mm, let's get some in. And that's why I didn't go several times around these ones like I did everything else because I was thinking well it might be covered you know when we do this so you're not even seeing that one too much yet but it started to blend our colors in that was the idea I'm not going to go up into this lighter Color. Just going to use it down here because I've got those two other colors. It looks quite effective so far. Can't wait to get those other colors in. Sometimes you have a thought of how you think it's going to work, and then when you see it, come together you might change your mind or you might think yeah now I used two uh, strands and that was further in now I'm going to use one I'm, I want this darker one to last and I'm going to use the other ones over top or towards the top so let's just get some single strands in now and all I'm doing is I'll maybe even go for a little bit, tiny bit, bit out into that colour. This is something that builds up over time. We might do some larger stitches. They don't all have to be small. Blending those extreme dark grey and the red that I put earlier on more into our picture. can be teased around wherever you like. Let's remember a lot of it's going to be probably under this around. So I've still left some darker that I can come back to but I'm now going for the lighter shade. And I'm just going to use a single strand again. 
colours. We've chosen good colours. You don't have to cover every single bit of it with stitch. But we do want to produce that lovely flyaway crest. So at the moment we've done nothing harder than these plain straight stitches. And honestly I don't know. I mean at the end we might we might just see if we want to add in our optional extra. So that's going to take me quite a while. I'll just do that bit and we'll come back with the next colour. Let's just have a look. Let's see if we can get it up closer. Can you see? So we've used a variety of threads. Darker in here. Gone over it a little bit with some some of the gold brought in a lemon color on the edges and even done a few french knots now in case we missed that in the original video i'm going to do that again now there's another color i'm wanting to bring in and i just want to see how the white is going to go so here we go i bring the needle up from underneath I hold a little bit of tension off to the side. I wrap the needle, uh, the thread around the needle three or four times. And then I put the needle back in close to where I came up. And you'll end up with a little knot. Those little turns around the needle that you took, they will knot up into a nice little circular, a pretty knot. Now, if you don't hold that tension, if you just hold it out the way to get you three or four um, turns of the thread and just let it loose, you'll end up with these lovely loose loopy knots. And I love those as well. Now another thing that you can do with a French knot, we've done our loose wobbly ones and we've done our little neat ones, but you can go like this and instead of going back in where you started, you go further out when you put it back in. And what you end up with might be hard to see on this but you end up with a little stem see and that's another great little thing that you can do to um, vary it do another one here just further away a little tiny stem you can do big long stems too i just don't think i've got quite enough thread and i like to keep key thread up my sleeve in case I have other ideas whilst I'm working out what I want to do. Sometimes you know you want to create a look, you know, uh, but how would you do it? Like with fur and feathers and things like that. And it's very interesting to work out sometimes, you know, how you can, how you can make it. I'm not trying to be too, um, it's not like a photograph. It's an artistic impression of a crane. But it's fun. I think it's going quite well. But I have one more colour up my sleeve that I can bring into it yet and I just haven't decided what it's going to be. What do I need? I have these small bits left still. That's a darker one, red. Thought I had a bit of grey there too, but I don't know. Um, but I've decided to bring in as my last colour this. 
and it's the same one we had earlier but sometimes it's good to just have two of them um, there's a lemon I've still got left all sorts to use yet hmm. I just thought that this was almost disappearing on the background and I would add a little bit more of, of this oh no that's this that I've separated single strand let's see if we can just do something here what I was wondering was could we have some that go a little bit further out and remember this is still in the design phase so I work it out as I go but it would be a good way to sort of incorporate that that gauze so um yeah I'm just thinking that could work I could do just a little bit of that and it would go out and, and hold those in place you know yeah something like that could work just using a single strand at the moment because I want it to be everywhere and uh, I'm just going to do that go out from the edge So I wanted it to be like that gauze was almost, you know, the continuation of his hair. Anyway. go too far because I've got to remember that a lot of it's not not seen Just long stitches there. So I'm pretty happy. I think I'd probably go back and do a few little, you know, one strand um, crunch knots if I wanted. And then just finish up with using whatever leftover threads I want. I will finish that and show you at the end. There is one more thing I always try and do, and that is I try and do a little, a little tiny fleck when I've got a dark eye. And it just brings a little bit of life to it. So I'll use a light colour and just do a little tiny seed stitch. And that'll be it. So there we are. Let's have a look at a few close-ups so you can see what I've been, talk been talking about. It really is just straight stitch, running stitch, um, with a few French knots. And look at how well it's flowed into that gauze. You know, I was so happy that I ended up making it twice in a different colour range. This one's called Crazy Crane and both of these kits are now going to be available on my Etsy shop. So I hope you've really enjoyed this video and you've gotten something from it. My name's Tracy from Art Fibre Stitch and um, just press like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this video. All of my other links are below and once again thanks for watching.